All right, everybody, thank you for joining us uh, today. We're on the Reboot Something podcast by Trilogy Innovations. Super excited to be in uh, at the new look of our studio. So uh, excited to have uh, Dr. Tom Devine with us. Thanks uh, for having me. Absolutely. Yes. Thanks for joining. And uh, of course, my uh, left hand man over here. <laughs> the Randy. left hand man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Randy Collins, Chief Operations Officer uh, for Trilogy here. So, uh, anyway, we're excited to be talking with you, Tom. Uh, we yes. have a lot that we want to talk about in terms of um, higher education, uh, your contributions, things that you've seen, you know, uh, being a professor or, you know, a teaching assistant professor. Uh, at WU and and just all the great things that uh, you know that you bring to the table to the state of West Virginia and uh, the students as well. So I was at Fairmont State for five years before WVU too. Oh, so nice. Yeah, 2015 to 2020 I was at Fairmont State, and then 20 to 23 at WVU. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you want to just go over quickly over your background to let, let people know exactly <laughs> yeah. where, who you are and where you come from. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I grew up in uh, Whitehall. I was born in oh. Sistersville, out by nice. the Ohio River. River, uh, mm-hmm. close to uh, New Marchville, Sistersville General Hospital, same place my mother and my brother were born. But I grew up in Whitehall, South Fairmont, um, went to um, East Fairmont High School, uh, graduated in 99. Uh, after that, I went to St. John's College. This one's wow. not on the list. I <laughs> oh, yeah, right. uh, and I, I got a So that's an all required curriculum there. It's a great book school. And uh, everybody does the same thing. We read the great books from the sources, not from secondhand people writing about them. So we wow. start with the Greeks and work our way up to the modern world. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that degree is an equivalent of a Bachelor of Arts with a double major in philosophy mm-hmm. and the history of science and mathematics and a double minor in classics and world literature. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So they call us Johnnies, the people that go to St. John's. It's, uh, oh, Johnny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they call the fighting us Johnny. Johnnies. <laughs> well, the only sport that we compete intercollegiately in is croquet. Oh, really? And really? every year they have the Annapolis Cup which they play against the midshipmen of the United States Naval Academy, oh, which man. are the middies. Yeah, the so middies. the middies and the johnnies. The middies and the johnnies. And then the townies that live in town. <laughs> that sounds a, like a 1950s movie. Yeah, yeah. it does. <laughs> Get the middies and the johnnies yeah. out here. Yeah, yeah. we're still all like snapping. Yeah, yeah, snapping. Yeah. 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 It's very seat. intense. <laughs> um, actually, everybody dresses to the nines. Uh, oh, yeah. and has a very good time, shall we say. Oh, yeah, it's a very good time. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, yeah. so then I worked in the real world for a few years, and I was always been bound to tech. Uh, started playing, like, X-Wing and TIE Fighter on, like, TI, you know, 486, like, really old computers. Right. Uh, started writing code with uh, BASIC in uh, fifth grade. We used to make little like choose your own adventure games and you could like ski a little person down as the cursor down the screen in the console, Mm -hmm. just playing around. Oh, yeah. Um, So I thought that was pretty neat. And I said, well, I'll try to get back into something to do with tech. I worked as the the, uh, IT director for a, a contract labor company for a while. And I started going back to school. So I went to Fairmont State. I got degrees uh, in uh, computer science and mathematics. <laughs> Let me check the paper. So on that. Exactly. <laughs> well, well, I what I wanted was a degree in physics because I always wanted to be a theoretical astrophysicist. Oh, it was wow. like the coolest job yeah, you could right. get. Yeah, you right. just make stuff up about yeah, space, and if you've exactly. got a good story, you get a Nobel Prize. <laughs> and that's uh, the Big Bang Theory. Weeknights at nine. <laughs> yeah. Right. So yeah. I, you know that's what I wanted, but it, it it ended up being cheaper for me to go get all like the math work out of the way at Fairmont State. And then I realized that, you know, I had one professor, Don Tobin, who uh, you know, now teaches at Westland, uh, who's done a lot. He was a cybersecurity guy. He, he mm-hmm. created the cybersecurity program there back in 2001. Oh, wow. They've had it for a long time, wow. uh, you know, back when it was off the radar. Yeah. Right. And he said, you know what, because we had to take a programming class. I said, you're pretty good at this. Maybe if this astrophysics thing doesn't work out, right. you get this as a side gig. All right. right. Yeah, all right. I like coding. Yeah. So I got the CS degree on top of that, and then uh, when the summer I graduated, I this, this is a story. So I, I lived in uh, Puerto Rico nice. in the jungle on a mountain in a bungalow. Uh, I was a visiting scientist intern at the largest radio telescope in the world, and I was writing code uh, for that telescope to help the sysadmin out because he was spending all his time copying out all this data. 
So while I was there, that was really foreign. I feel like the, the truest Tom that ever was was Jungle Tom. <laughs> you jungle know, Tom. it's like a whole different <laughs> yeah. vibe when you're out there. Right. Um, and then writing code all day, you know, at the right. biggest rate of time. It was pretty cool. Yeah. So I got to know the astrophysicist, and uh, they had this problem. They were getting all this data, like these instruments are really sensitive, collect a lot of data. Yeah. Um, that telescope was in uh, James Bond in the, the movie Ha. Huh. They're like, have a big fight on it up in the air in the scaffolding. Right. I got to go up there. It was really cool. Oh, nice. There was no James Bond though. <laughs> uh, anyway, so they had this problem. They had all these uh, uh, plots to identify, right? To looking, and they got to like physically look at them to see pulsar, or not pulsar. They were trying to identify these. Uh, really rare stars. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, you know, I just learned a whole bunch of computer science algorithms and I had an artificial intelligence class my mm -hmm. senior year. Uh, and then actually the junior summer, I did, I started doing data mining uh, and did some machine learning on uh, outcomes based educational data from the chemistry department. Whole other thing. Yeah. So I said, <laughs> you know, I want to help these people, you know, right. and uh, that's what I kind of directed my PhD work at. So I got the master's, WVU. I did like uh, uh, fairly boring uh, research on um, like software fault prediction, which is actually a pretty cool field now that I've been in it for a while. I just didn't think it was hot and cool at the time. Uh, now I'm like, that was really good work. Uh, and and we, like NASA loved it. And, and we, we do stuff like that for them now. Um, so I did that. And then I got the Ruby Distinguished Doctoral Fellowship. Uh, I was uh, one of the first people to get that in the wow. cohort of, uh, I think, two people. I felt very awkward at the time. <laughs> but they, so they gave me a funding so I could do whatever I want. Oh so I tried to create this synergy that should have already been there between the physics department and the computer science department, and kind of bridge that gap yeah. and let's use our uh, algorithms and on your data and come up with new solutions to these problems. Right. Uh, so that's what I did my PhD work on. Mm -hmm. It was all machine learning using the radio astronomy data. So I ended up not being an astrophysicist, yeah. but I still got to play with space stuff. So oh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. It was neat. <laughs> that's the beauty of computer uh, science. Yeah, yeah, that's great. How long have you been at, uh, at WVU um, as a professor now? Uh, so I so I took the Fairmont State job when the fellowship ended. Okay. Because I needed money. Yeah, yeah. And I started teaching. And I was like, eh, well, I'll try this teaching thing out. You know, it'll pay the yeah. bills for a while until I can get the PhD and then go do something cool in industry, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a trap. <laughs> so, so I taught for five yeah. years, uh, which, you know, it dragged out the PhD. But let me tell you, if you just take one research hour every semester, you still get free Tickets to all the games. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. there you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So that whole time. Bookmark that. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about picking up another PhD. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One hour at a time. Yeah. The next yeah. 30 exactly. minutes. That's um, anyway, so when I finished the PhD finally in 2020, that's when I moved over to, to WVU. And I literally, this is pandemic for the plague. I literally uh, interviewed that spring break. Mm. in spring 2020 i started in fall but i interviewed in person and they never came back to class from that spring break oh, wow. <laughs> for like semesters upon semesters so yeah yeah it was weird it was yeah. weird huh. it's really strange. so um i guess in talking about you know the your journey and and how you know you progressed and you know what you thought you wanted to do and how you ended up blending that uh anyway you know, um, I, I guess what are what are some of the you know methodologies or, or approaches? Like, what shaped what what helped to shape that journey for you? Was it you know one instance in particular, or what you know did you kind of fall you, into that? Really, I just kept putting myself out there and taking any opportunity that came my way. Yeah, uh, and so really the the telescope like once i had the bachelor's i was really up in the air should i even go to grad school right mm -hmm. because i you know i was already non-traditional so i gotta make some money man. Right, right um so once i did that uh that internship in arecibo and then uh, dr katarina gershova popstoyanova oh wow. that's about it it is a mouthful yeah. she's macedonian she was my advisor she gave me the opportunity to, to start working for her in grad school yeah and i just took it and went with it so i think really just that summer 
well as before summer when I just started spamming out applications to internships mm -hmm. and you know most of them got rejected I was applying to all these like radio telescopes and oh, uh, yeah. optical telescopes like in Hawaii right, and, right. and Chile and yeah, all these nice. like cool yeah. things in right. Mexico and it just so happened because I didn't even have a physics background but it just so happened that one of them needed a CS guy oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and oh, nice. You know, the rest kind of developed from that. So, right. well, like you said, it kind of sucks you in. But the the cool thing is, that with most universities, is the research side, right? Mm -hmm. So they are getting to play around with the latest and greatest. I know when we were doing work for the Department of Defense, we were constantly doing these prototypes and stuff, which is really cool. So it, it definitely hooks you in. So I understand how you come to <laughs> more more than the research. I just I get so attached to the students. Uh, I think the most rewarding thing as uh, as a human being that I have is to take these students and, you know, they're worried. They're in my office. One student in particular, I'm not going to mention his name, uh, but I'll probably make him watch this. Uh, a solid C student, right? Not the greatest student ever. Always worried in my office every day, worried he's not going to get a job, worried he's not going to graduate, mm -hmm. studying hard. But he had the work ethic, you know, yeah, right. and he put his head down and he would do the work. And I said, man, you're going to be just fine. We're going to laugh about this someday. And now, you know, he's got a nice house in Cheat Lake. Uh -huh. He's got a family. He's got plenty of money. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, hindsight, bud. You know, yeah, I actually did job. the same thing uh, with Dr. Peace because uh, I started out in computer science and engineering, mm -hmm. and then when they were all answering binary, I'm like, oh, this this <laughs> isn't for me, right? So I switched to MIS, but uh, we had an object oriented class, and uh, everybody was getting really low grades on it, and it, it, they were calling it like the weeder class or yeah. <laughs> that would weed people out. Mm -hmm. So I went to Dr. Peace. I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. And he's like, no, you're going to be fine. Trust me. Don't worry about it. But, uh, and with the bell curve, I did end up getting like a B because I got like a 36 on the exam. But the guy behind me got a 19. The other guy got a 17. <laughs> so with the curve. But uh, to your point, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you have this impact. And I know before uh, we had started, Chad was talking about all the students. Uh, how they actually rave about you and all the different things that you do at WVU. So, yeah, yeah exactly. And, yeah. And, and really one of the biggest pieces of feedback that they give is the fact that you take this individual approach for all of them, right? And so really meeting them where they're at and their learning styles. And I think that's what makes, for myself at least, um, you know, that's what defines a, a great you know, educator for me, you know? I think where that comes from, when I was at Fairmont State, you know, I had three jobs at the time to put myself through this, oh, through this school. Man. You know, things were tough at the time. Uh, and one of those jobs was a uh, student supplemental instruction leader. So it was basically a tutor. Yeah. Uh, and I worked with a lot of different students one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. doing that tutoring. Um, and I, I think you really get to see how you know, even just the same assignment, if you explain it differently to different people, you know, there is a way that makes it click. Oh, yeah. And I was doing a lot of math at the time, so yeah. it's mostly math, uh, not a lot of CS, but uh -huh. uh, but still just learning how people learn. I think that was very uh, eye opening. I still apply that. Do you feel like uh, maybe in your uh, you know educational journey, um, you know, were there things that you knew you wanted to do differently, that being one of them? Um, you know, as far as like meeting students where they're at, do you feel like? I mean, I never had, I was blessed to have amazing instructors uh, the whole time. Uh, I had one uh, that I got a, I got a C on the first test. This is, I don't get C's. This is yeah, not, right. you know, I, I bust the curve, right? right that's yeah, that's yeah, what I do. Uh, yeah. And uh, I had like all the answers right. But he didn't like the way that I, I didn't put enough space between things. He didn't like the symbol I was wow. using for uh, the, the carrot instead of the hat. And it was like all these little things. Where I was like, oh, my God, how is this? Right. But I adapted to it. Uh, and, I, and I think there's a place for that. That was a physics professor. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, they've all been so good. Like, I, I don't really have a lot of criticism for any of the, the professors I've had. I do try to blend the, you know, eclectic, just like everything else, take the things that work from yeah. all the different places and try to blend them into your own thing. And that's kind of what I've been doing. Right. Well, it, I mean, it really stands out. I get to, you know, every year we've, we just completed our, our, our third internship program and 
wildly successful, our ability to you know, bring these students in, teach them exactly what we're doing, how we're doing it, and um, you know, getting them jobs afterwards and working within the federal space here in West Virginia. And so, you know, yourself uh, being from West Virginia, you know, homegrown, born and raised, and, uh, and having so much you know, vested energy into the state too, you know, it really shows um, in, the, in the amount of students that come to me from your, you know, that have your class and uh, just the amount of effort that you put out to, to help them with opportunities. And uh, it's just, it's humbling every year to see the amount of students that now seek us out, right? And that first year, all I did was send you a, you know, like, hey, we have an internship. Right, and right. You're a computer science professor, so yeah. hopefully, you know, you'll, you'll respond and just the, the amount of students that, that came my way and then, and then said great things about you. I'm like, we need to talk to this guy more. So well, it's one of, it's my personal mission to make sure that now I and I say this in class all the time. I got nothing against the out of state students. I love the out of state students. I want them to get good jobs and graduate and do wonderful things. Of course, but in my heart for the West Virginians, right. I, I want to create you know to grow this crop of workforce that can take all the jobs that are here right now. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many, and a lot of people right. don't realize a lot of people are high school and grades. They don't realize how many opportunities there are to do something other than mine coal right here in West yes, Virginia. Right. Absolutely. And if we don't, you know, train up our people to take these jobs, they're going to bring people in from other states right. and they're going to drive on my road way right. too fast. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. That's actually how we uh, got connected because the, even with Tech Yeah, we, that's the, our message is trying to keep the people right. here. Because mm -hmm. uh, I think something like 80% of the students graduate and leave and yeah. leave each other's Huge jobs. Huge problem. Right? Yes. Uh, so what we were trying to do was raise our voice to say, no, there's great tech jobs here. Yeah. You don't have to go anywhere else. Right. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the guys that was at the cybersecurity launch that we were doing, mm -hmm. he kept talking about wanting to go to Atlanta. Uh, Jared, but yeah. now he's like, no, I think I want to stay here. Like, you guys are doing cool stuff here. Yep. And so it's been part of our mission to get the message out there. But then also some of the technologies that we're using that we need uh, these kids to be trained up on, uh, making sure that we're working for, with folks like Tom and David to make sure that's getting integrated into the curriculum. So when they do graduate, just like our internship, we get uh, cloud practitioners. That's one of the first things that we do because yeah. uh, most of these uh, uh, federal agencies are now moving to AWS and yeah. Azure, Google. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so we want to make sure that as they get out there in the workforce, they're ready to go on day one. Right. So. Absolutely. And I, I really appreciate all that you guys do for the students uh, and for the, the workforce in West Virginia. Just yeah. personally, so thank you oh, very much. Yeah. For oh, that. yeah, awesome. Yeah, we, thanks for helping. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, yeah, yeah. It works best when yeah. we're a team. Collaborate, right? right? Yeah. Exactly. I went to East Fairmont as well. I went to WU, I started at Fairmont State, um, <laughs> so I graduated from, from, from WU and uh, very much, you know, feel that as well. So it's, he was great to have him in coming. Pittsburgh when we hired I, him. Actually. I did. I did. And we brought him back to state. So he's one of the people <laughs> nice that work. we actually brought back. We, yes. we have relocated three people now, and then we have four more that are like ready to move here whenever you know the timing works out and, and contracts launch. You know, contingently waiting to move here, and so it's nice to to bring people back or even new people in. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I didn't realize it was so beautiful here. We right. just hired. Someone the other day that was like, I didn't realize how beautiful it was. Right right now. Now. I was like, oh, you're, you're at the best time. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's special here, the colors. But uh, um, to, to, to segue, Brandy, you had such a uh, you know good point there in talking about the different programs that we partner with at WU and everything. So mm -hmm. um, let's talk about those initiatives and uh, you know the work that Tom's been doing on the um, on the on the drone side. Um, I'm not going to steal the thunder. So um, so let's talk about. Um, you know, our most recent, uh, or actually, do you want to, do you want to yeah. speak to that a little bit more? Yeah, the yeah sure. Project, capstone project. So this capstone, uh, we, we've always had a capstone uh, requirement for the CS, CSE. So everybody in the lane department, computer science, computer engineering, electrical engineering, does a capstone. And there are like some classic capstone projects that are really good. Like with Mars Rover is one of them, yeah. right? The Eco Car is, is, yeah. a, is a really good one that yeah. competes nationally. Yeah. Uh, so there's some excellent uh, choices out there. But since we started the cybersecurity major, we have more cybersecurity students that get to that capstone, which is of course required because it's required for everyone. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I don't really see an option for me. I'd like something that was more cyber specific. 
So literally one of these students was a great example. So this minority student, uh, not a wealthy family, mm -hmm. limited resources. Uh, for instance, um, we were doing um, virtual machines. So this is one wow. of the problems that we have. She's got a laptop and it's got like two cores and four gigs of RAM and 128 gig hard drive. And we're trying to spin up virtual machines on that thing so we can do exercises. And it's like, you know, it's just not there. I ended up. So now we're working towards being able to do better stuff for that by integrating, you know, AWS and having that an on site. I'm really excited. We're going to have our own outpost on campus soon. Nice. Um, which is going to be excellent. So deploying those things for them. But anyway, yeah. she she had come to me and she was like, I just really, I need a cybersecurity option. And I was like, hmm, what could we do? Literally the day before, my buddy just turned 58. He was an old, one of my three jobs was as a bouncer uh, for five years as well. That was how I got my gas money for the week. Uh, so one of the guys I knew from there, it, maybe he's a little bit crazy. He said these drones were like, following him around at his house. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was wondering if there's any way you could shoot him down. I was like, I don't know, probably. You can't yeah. use a real gun. Uh, <laughs> and that just popped into my head because I was just talking about it. I was like, well, maybe we could do this. Yeah, uh, maybe we can hack into them. Yeah, maybe we can hack these drones out of the That's sky. That's the origin. Yeah. That was, that was, that was yeah. scary. Okay. Yeah, it just yeah, popped in just... while she was talking to me right there. <laughs> yeah. And I said, well, let's see. And it just so happened that uh, Trilogy was looking around at the time for something yeah. that, some way to help out. Help? Yeah. Right. yeah. So I said, you know, we could definitely, you know, see, you can't do something like that without some initial funding so we can right. get some stuff. So very graciously supplied uh, some, some base funding, which we still have a good bit of, uh, so we could get a laptop and we got a, uh, we enrolled them in an EC Council drone hacking course mm -hmm. to get everybody up to speed for the initial group uh, so that we could start building what we wanted to build. So the goal that they that we currently have is to create a uh, penetration testing environment for uh, the unmanned uh, vehicles, so the yeah. drones. So what we want to do is have, uh, and we want this to be deployable from the cloud, so we can uh, you could you could be attacked, you could come in, you could have your laptop, you connect to the internet, you plug in an antenna, and it will uh, you know get the set up everything and start doing the scans and then see what exploits can be run on the things that you find. Huh. So that's kind of where we're going with like penetration testing of different models and things like that. Right now, their current capability, so the way CSE 480 works, first semester they do um, planning, second semester they implement. Mm -hmm. So we're on our first implementation phase. I have two more groups, 14 people that are now in the planning phase yeah. uh, and they're working on different aspects of this stuff which I can talk about in a second. So the other group, uh, the original group, has a, a graphical user interface up and it can scan and find and identify drones with, that have Wi-Fi signals um, and automatically launch uh, denial of service attacks on them, uh, which basically just spams a bunch right. of signals at them so they can't get their signal, which is awkward when it happens because yeah. we, nobody can control the drone anymore. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so You're like, hey, it worked. Oh, God, look at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Luckily, it just sits there, yeah. and they can grab it and flip it over real quick, and it'll shut off. Uh, okay. This is what we've figured out so far. Yeah. So that's kind of the beginning, the foundation. Yeah. Uh, where we're trying to go is to make this like an open source platform that yeah. would be out there for anybody to use, that you could use in the field to test anything you had. Yeah. So then uh, Randy graciously yeah. comes up with this other drone. I think yeah. he really just wanted to buy a new one. Right, yeah. yeah. Like, Here you go, take this one. Uh, you to the, buy that, 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 my wife actually even said, uh, we were walking today because I told her we were coming to interview with you. And she goes, why did you get in your drone again? I said, so I have an excuse to get a new one. <laughs> so, get a new one. Did you get a new one? Uh, not yet. Not no, because then you're going to have to get a new one. I know, exactly. <laughs> Every year, it's a working partnership. Make a little turnover. Exactly, that's right. right. Um, okay, so we got that new one. It's yeah. all RF, the radio frequency stuff. Right. It's yeah, not Wi-Fi. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit a more heavy area. duty, right? Yeah. So the new groups, one of them is working on RF, and one of the things that they're developing is, uh, or that they're attempting to develop, is like a cannon that you can point and disrupt the signals and take it down. Uh, we got some some radio geeks in that yeah. group 
that are, are doing some cool stuff. And they've already been able to um, disrupt the media stream from the other one as well, yeah. uh, just with a little antenna and some software. Good. The other group is working on trying to make this thing a cloud uh, deployable, right. uh, like yeah. modular, anywhere. deployable anywhere, any computer, just get yeah. the, the USB plugged in and, and get it to go. So yeah. And soon we'll be getting more groups uh, because I'm sure I'm going to talk next week uh, to recruit the next, you know, crop of students for this. And I'm sure we'll have several people in it. So we got to come up with stuff yeah. for them to do. Well, it's funny, it... I, I feel a little dirty here and I'll explain why. <laughs> so, <laughs> Where's uh, this going? <laughs> so, yeah, right. Uh, so it's funny because we did that. We funded uh, WVU and did the drone for them to try to hack and do all the signal. Yeah. Uh, but we got a uh, SBIR from the Air Force Research Lab, and we're using AI ML to actually defend against those things whenever people are trying to penetrate, right? That's so good. That way we're helping protect the Army, and then we're helping uh, you guys with uh, these other ones. Well, so the whole point of penetration right? testing yeah. is yeah. so you can fix the problem. Correct. Right? Yes. So yes. You, we're not yeah. just red team. You need to have the blue team out there. Right. So that's good. Yeah. That's so good. we're getting that from uh, both sides. We're, help, we're helping the Air Force try to protect against it, and we're helping yeah. them try to crack into it. Well, so. I was wondering how I could <laughs> plug that in, so that yeah. was so graciously there, you know, uh, gracefully yeah. done yeah. there. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but, um, you know, talking about some of the other things we're doing at WU, and I don't know how aware of this you are, but uh, kind of just opening up the conversation a little bit. But Randy, uh, obviously you can speak to this more, but the, yeah. you know, the Red Hat training that we're doing at WU now too. So, oh, yeah. um, you know, you, you want to talk about that a little bit more? You kind of sprinkled it in there at the beginning, oh, but yeah. that we're working on. Yeah. So uh, we got together with Tom and David and uh, um, uh, Andy Rog and whenever we first start talking about this, because yeah. I know Dave especially is like, oh, well, we love Linux. And we're like, well, we do uh, all kinds of Red Hat for FBI, Mass, and all these different companies. Yeah, so I said, we have a really good partnership with them. And they're like, oh, it'd be great if uh, we could get Red Hat to sponsor a lab. And I was like, well, maybe Red Hat won't, but maybe we can and put all Red Hat technologies in there, right? Because right. uh, we have our office in Bridgeport where we do all the trainings for FBI and Department of Justice. But then we have the kiosk there. So these students that are going through the curriculum, they actually have a place to come and uh, take those exams here locally. Because before we had opened up that kiosk, you had to go to Ohio State, to Columbus, Ohio, Ohio yeah. DC, or Philadelphia. Right, so if you drive all the way there, you fill the test, you have to drive all the way back. It's painful. I know it's I'd like to take a couple, yep, yep. Uh, a couple of those uh, uh, tests multiple times. But yeah. So it's nice having that locally here, but we wanted to work with them. And apparently there was uh, somebody in the MIS program that had gotten to Red Hat Academy. Well, on the engineering side, they didn't know about it. So it was like, hey, no, let's connect these people. Because right. again, that's what we're trying to do, connect people with the industry. So that way, uh, again, we want to set these kids up for success. Right. Not only set them up for success, but make them aware of all the jobs that are available after they do that. So that was part of that. And then uh, I know uh, you and David have been working with Robin uh, from Red Hat. So. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. If you want to talk about that from your all's perspective. Yeah. So what does it look how, like how trying to integrate along. into the right. curriculum? Yeah. yeah. So one of uh, Dave's, uh, one of his classes, he's trying to align with the, uh, one of the Red Hat certifications. So, so that, administrator. Yeah. 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 So you'll learn all the stuff for that in that class. I can't remember the number yes. of it right now, but it, that he is working on that. I have always um, taught Red Hat uh, on some level. So I try to get them, I, I give them Red Hat, I give them Fedora, I give them Ubuntu, I give them Cali, I give them lots of different distros uh, to work with. But one of the, the main ones that I do inside 266, which is Fundamentals, is to uh, do system hardening on a Red Hat, you know, Red Hat Enterprise Linux system. So once they, they started that developer uh, program at Red Hat and we could get yes. we yeah, could get for it for free. free. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So that's when I started doing this when yeah. they made that program. I said, man, because I always wanted it, but you know, I didn't realize the paywalls. Yeah. Well, and the Red Hat Academy uh, for universities is yeah. also free. So we got them set up. So the role based access that we have okay. uh, as a partner right. for, for our Red Hat consultants now. WVU students have access to that. that full so they can, stuff. Yeah, they can spin up a VM, 
yeah. they can go through the courses themselves, yeah. uh, which prepares them to get certified. And again, if we get more of these kids certified, yep. there's a plethora of jobs there that is. we could help. Place Absolutely. Them. Exactly. Right. And it's again, go back to all around the country message. too. Keep them here. You know? All around the country yeah. too with our with our Red Hat partnership and how long it's been in, in effect and hearing from their North American program staffing um, just how high we rank as number two out of their entire partnership of uh, the nice. yeah, yeah. Partners, yeah yep exactly so um, yeah. it's yeah. great yeah. to see all these things you know yeah. playing out now <laughs> and, and, and and uh you know interweaving over time and seeing how everything's evolving now and and uh, so we were very curious about the you know a, adoption of it um into the curriculum from your end too so we'll have to we'll have to revisit that later on yeah i was going to have them do that lab tomorrow uh, but now i'm thinking about Looking more into this academy, uh, oh, the Red Hat academy. And, and integrating yeah. that, yeah, uh, yeah, because it's awesome. I mean, and it's uh, free training, so yeah. they, they also have something called the workforce development through Red Hat, uh-huh. and it's actually for more non traditional students. You okay, know, hitting on that earlier, yeah, about being non traditional. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we actually have that set up, and then the Tech Yeah conference that we have, we're having it on June 19th and 20th again. So we get all these companies, uh, service integrators. So the money that's left over goes into the Charles Robert Pinkton Foundation. And we're actually using that money to help pay, to bridge that gap, if you will, financially for some of these non-traditional students that's looking to get these micro certs or some of these other things. Or working with Secure WV that has these uh-huh. military folks that's transitioning right. back over after their military service and they have all this experience, they might need one or two certs, being able to pay to get them those certs and make sure that we're getting them jobs. Yeah, that's, that's really what great. it all comes back to. In the yeah, end. It really yeah. Is. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, circles. And it's good with all, all the way around because, again, most of us are from West Virginia. Yeah. And you know, they have these polls all the time where we're 50th and everything. And yeah. the only way that we can change that is put in the work this. and do it ourselves. That's right. right. That's right. right. Which is why we started the podcast. That's the attitude. Right. That's yeah. what you exactly. got to do. It's yeah. nice to see somebody actually doing it yeah. and getting it done because yeah. that makes a big difference in people's lives. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's a really the biggest part of success is people that talk about doing it versus people that take action. Yeah. And if you're not taking action, then... It is just a dream. You know, being in West Virginia my whole life, the people that we have have insane work ethics. Like oh, my, my yes. whole family, my granddad on a yeah. farm, had yeah. a dairy farm out there by the Ohio River. Uh-huh. You know, my mom's the hardest working lady I ever met. Yep. I mean, we got some hard working people in this state. Right. So they Absolutely. can get anything done that they put their minds to. Yeah. So no it's it, nice for them to get an opportunity to show it. Yeah. yeah, and it's great to see how everything's getting repurposed. I know they just mentioned about the Hydrogen Hub, uh, New Core, and some of these other, uh, where they're making investments in areas that where um, mm-hmm. manufacturing and stuff has kind of went away, and where they're trying to bring that back with newer technologies, right? They even have the, uh, uh, I can't think of the company offhand, but... Uh, where they're making the electric uh, boat engines. Now that's going to be here in the state of West Virginia as well, right? So it's all these cool technologies. And again, if we're not out there from K through 12, talking about a lot of the things that you do, Mm -hmm. because if you come and you show them what you're doing with drones, they're like, oh, that's awesome. My mom, I uh, saw her yesterday and uh, she's like, uh, thank God that we ended up buying you that uh, Nintendo back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> right? At the time, she's probably like, get out of the house. But, yeah. you know, it's because that interests me and in how the games were. And I thought, hey, I'm going to be a programmer. But again, that wasn't in the cards for me. <laughs> but uh, I understand technology. But it was because of that. I had uh, talked to one of the unit chiefs of, at the FBI. Uh, their kids wanted to go to WVU because they went for the pumpkin drop. Mm-hmm. that they would do that's right? going on right now yeah that's yeah. going on right now and then uh my neighbor he keeps going to these wvu engineering camps mm-hmm. so now he wants to go to wvu and become a programmer so just making kids aware of these jobs Absolutely. and opportunities like that's where i see doing things like this making sure that the message is getting out there because you're doing really cool things that would interest these kids yeah and be like i want to be a drone pilot you know or so like i gotta plug some things uh, we have, uh, well, literally just Monday, I spent the morning with uh, the students from Grafton High School. Mm-hmm. So uh, Stacy Ward down there, one of the teachers, has been doing a great job getting people from uh, industry and uh, academia 
down there to talk to them. So every year in December, we go down and give a talk. That has transformed. Like when I was at Fairmont State, it was just me talking and maybe some former students. But now they have like 30 different sessions and the kids go and do like an actual activity and they get to pick. And like I was doing cryptography um, activities with them. So they came here and uh, we were showing off everything. We had the drone oh, yeah. team there. Yes. We had uh, some of the student organizations, AIWVU, I'm the uh, faculty advisor for. Love those kids. We just went to the Fright Farm uh, last yeah, so week. The Fright Farm. Yeah, we're, yeah. Doing, we're doing Track or Treat. Yeah. Uh, the theme is a post-apocalyptic Barbie after the AI has taken over the world. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> so that should be fun. That's yeah. tomorrow night. Right. Um, we also, uh, last night, uh, it's been a busy week, we had a uh, guest speaker, Brandon Bailey, who is a legit, like, awesome penetration tester. Oh, and he came and talked on behalf of the Cybersecurity Access Program to a crowd full of students that were currently at WVU. Yeah. That Cybersecurity Access Program is funded by the NSF. They gave us a million dollars. We don't get any of it. Right. We put it all in scholarships and oh, give it out to yeah. you know students who are from West Virginia. Yeah. And we try to hit underserved populations in West Virginia and give these away. And one of those, uh, which is kind of nice, was from the Grafton High School visit oh, last really? year oh, and actually awesome. got the scholarship and is coming in, in my classes now. Nice. So trying to get that word out, get the money out to the mm -hmm. kids where it needs to go and, and get them the opportunities. It's really, really makes it's a difference. It's what it takes, that, that, that blend of industry, education, you know, government to all come together, get the word out and, and collaborate. And that's what it takes. It's not, you know, we're never siloed, when, you know, to these, to these one areas and it takes people actually making those connections. So yeah, this is great work. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's talk about, you know, the, the, the STEM program, the, you know, within the curriculum, right. Um, uh, in, in terms of, you know, the challenges and roadblocks that, you know, um, some of the students face nowadays, you know, what, what do you think are some of those, you know, biggest challenges or, or areas that, that could be focused on, you know, better? Yeah, so I don't know if you guys are going to like my answer to this, but it's too easy uh, now. And the problem I see with a lot of students that are starting, it's too easy to find the answer somewhere else mm -hmm. and not try to figure it out yourself. Yeah. And, you know, with ChatGPT and the generative AI that's out there, right. and like uh, GitHub's Copilot and Board, all these things. So I, I've been teaching intro programming for the last eight years. And a fair amount would make them come in and write it down on a pencil and paper. Right. Well, I had a class with nine kids. I can't do that. Yeah. Uh, I got to have something else. And I can't, I don't even have a grader anymore. So right. I got to resort to like automated stuff. Yeah. So anyway, it's so tempting for these young students right. to, you know, just all I have to do is just copy paste it over into the chat GPT and it'll, right. it'll literally give me an answer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's amazing. I mean, it's not infallible and it makes stuff up all the time. It's yes. like hallucinating in its dreams, right. but it's there. And I think that this, it's not even a generational thing, but you know, the last you know 20 years ever since we've had Google, right. it's so easy to just look for your answer and go find it. Uh, so, so the students get really good at going and finding stuff, but that's not like for computer science, you got to work that brain. Yeah, yeah, that brain right. is a muscle. And if you don't run it through the, the exercises, then it's not going to get stronger. Yeah. So those tools are amazing. And AI is doing great things for people that are already established yes. and know what they're doing. Yeah. It's a great tool to take some pressure off of them. Yeah. I think the temptation is probably one of the biggest roadblocks students are going to put on themselves right. because they have this temptation to use it and get the answer. And they're never actually going to learn the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you had the punch card before, and then you put use Notepad plus plus and <laughs> have to do all the syntax yourself. And then the IDEs came, and they've been evolving to where it was like correcting, as you were talking about yeah. earlier. Yeah. Uh, your professor didn't like the spacing or something mm -hmm. like that in your code. Whereas now it's cleaning up your code for, for you, right? <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I missed this. I, I was working with this one guy where he was trying all day to figure out a problem. Uh, with uh, some database entry stuff he was doing. And I looked and it was like one single tick was out of place, yeah, right? That's all it and takes. Then all he did is correct it and then it worked. And he's like, oh my goodness. But now it's finding those yeah. for you, which again is cool. But Brandon is really big, especially with our internship on teaching that. 
if you can't think your way, because I was big on that where I would take somebody else's and change it to where I could get software to work. Right. right? But for me to sit down and come up with the thought and uh, rate it right. from scratch, I couldn't do it. I right. just couldn't. But uh, to your point, now being able to take that and finesse it, it is making things a lot faster. And the focus has went away from infrastructure. It's not, I need this big data center because then you have to have the cooling, the networking, all that stuff. Uh, that's why it's cloud. You can push a button and have your environment right there, mm-hmm. right? And then you can tear it down whenever you're done. So the focus is less on can I keep myself up and running or how do I solve the problem? And if if they're not being taught, how do I solve the problem? Mm-hmm. Then then we're failing, basically. That's yeah. a really good point, and I'm going to bring that up in class. <laughs> oh, yeah, <that's> <laughs> Thanks for giving me more fuel. Yeah, because exactly. right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I harp on them, but yeah. still, you know, I, yeah. we just published a paper uh, that was actually most of the work was done by some freshmen, three freshmen in honors uh, in my one of my sections of 111, which is like the intro to uh, data structures in Java. Yeah. And so they wanted an idea for a project. And I was like, okay, well, they want to do some chat GPT. I said, all right, I'll give you a bunch of anonymized student samples from this project that we do. And you feed it in, you take a prompt, you feed it in a chat GPT, and we'll see what kind of uh, you send it to the, the industry standard right now is MOS, which is out of Stanford for similarity detection in code. So it looks at like abstract syntax tree level. So it doesn't matter if you change the variable names right. or, you know, move stuff around and rearrange it. Uh, it. It goes beyond that and it can see it. And it's caught a lot of plagiarism before. Yeah. So we put this paper out on plagiarism detection. We just presented it over the summer uh, and it was very well received because right now it's like, what do we do? It's like yeah. we're getting flooded with this right now. Right. right? Uh, so, of course, everybody wanted to know more. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I told the students and I showed them the paper in the class. I said, this is literally on this project shows that I know how to find out that you cheated. Yeah. Still did it. Oh, yeah. And two still people did. still did it. They, oh, still, they still did it. Yeah. It's like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, so the temptation is so strong. Oh, yeah. like, it's... The good students can fight it. But I mean, yeah. for the, the other students, it's like, yeah, they need to realize they got to put in the work or they're not going to get it. Yeah. 80 20 war, uh, rule, right? <laughs> yeah, right. So, Great uh, principle. Not to date myself, but uh, I was I graduated in '97 from high school, and I remember it was in between my junior senior year going to the library to actually log on mm-hmm. to Netscape and watching that. So uh, we didn't have quite the access to any yeah. of this now, uh, which is probably a, a good thing, but um, but. But to your point, to go back and think about like Google, how do I write this paper or getting the information, right? And then a lot of that would be copy and paste and they would try to reword it. Mm -hmm. And now with AI, you can detect uh, really easily. And of course, they're trying to put out new AI to say, hey, this was the machine doing right to the counter. Again, it's always your separate Right? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's a different kind of world. And you think about that, about like what is our next evolution? Because we're constantly changing, mm-hmm. especially with the AI I was showing you in my glasses. How uh, it has right. AI built into the cameras now, so it'll be able to scan the environment and say, "Oh, he's at the Eiffel Tower," and give you actually through uh, through the um, camera and the headphones to tell me what's going on there or temperature or anything like that. So how all that kind of is evolving, you know, kids might be wearing that to start figuring out yeah. say. Uh, hey, Meta, what what is the uh, whatever the uh, algorithm is or something like that? Mm-hmm. I, I think the best way, and this is a personal belief, I don't have any evidence to back it up, the best way to get them to actually do the work and not look at the other sources is to just make them understand how important it is. Yeah. You know, they're really only hurting themselves. So I, I spend, you know, class time telling them, how important it is to train that brain muscle and to work it and to make sure it's good. Right. Cause if they really care, then oh, they'll yeah. know I need to not do that because it's gonna hurt me in the long run. Yeah. Well, and again, with machine learning, you know, and th- they're gonna end up, there will probably be a, a job where you're a prompt engineer. Like someone- Yeah, they call it prompt engineer. Right. That's what yeah. the AI club, that's what uh, they oh, call it. Oh, is that what it is? Really? Prompt engineer. Yeah. So where, you're just going to be figuring out what questions to ask mm-hmm. or how to ask that question. But again, mm-hmm. it goes to conceptually, 
what problem am I trying to solve? Right. Right. You can have the greatest tool in the world, but if you can't conceptually, whether it's a whiteboard or whatever, say, this is what I'm trying to get to, then that's what, how you don't know how to ask. Right. And you're going to get a wrong answer anyway. So well, I used to don't know how it works. <laughs> right. like, how that's, are you going to know if it works? Right. 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 <laughs> I mean, how I use ChatGTP on not a daily basis, but it's truly to help me be my mm-hmm. assistant and help mm-hmm. me. I don't know, make things into templates, you know, just check work, get the mundane tasks it's generally, right? It's so it's so, so, so it helps my capacity. I use it all the time. Right. So I'm not saying you should. Right. 100%. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, that's the that's the point is that it's so easy for them to, to you know, leverage that. Well, that's just being how, lazy. How can way, they right? use it in the right way right. to help them that's not going to stunt that right. learning factor? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I know I've spent more time trying to manipulate the questions or, or keep feeding, you know, I want to generate another response, keep going and, and see how deep I can actually get to get, you know, what I'm, what I'm actually looking for. And mm-hmm. I think that takes a, you know, that takes a little bit of skill too. Right. Uh, Absolutely. Point, so. um, with anything that's new and scary, like when the internet was first coming out, right. like, oh, that will go that way. That's a fad. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Getting information. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we don't need that. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, and it's the early adopters to people that are doing the AI. But again, you have to learn to use it the right way because right. it, it, it can be a force multiplier for you. Absolutely. Right. And we might be solving things or predicting things before they happen and being able to lead. Like we were talking about doing artificial intelligence, machine learning for flooding here in the state of West Virginia is real bad using sensors to be able to detect and get weather patterns to say, hey, before this even happens, yeah. this could be an area of concern and then send out warnings to people so they're not trying to drive through the water right. or, hey, uh, they might need to evacuate an area because especially in the southern part of the state where it's just nothing but mountains and a stream and they're all along the stream, yeah. that whole area gets wiped out, right? So it could be safe. Probably not too long ago. That, right. And yeah. that happened real bad. Oh, yeah. 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 So uh, working with... Uh, you know, the D, um, DEP or uh, DHS and stuff to try to get those messages out. And again, start leveraging some of this data ahead of time. Yeah. It's not going to be like, uh, I can't think of the movie right now that had the three people in the pods where they would, oh, Minority Report. Yeah. All right, where they were arresting people before they committed a murder. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> a, little too, a little too much. Yeah, yeah. That's a little too much. <laughs> It's funny how, uh, at least from a predicting standpoint, you know, if we're saving lives or for that, I think that would be yeah, that's a that's a good that's use. a great use. Yeah. Um, so when I was uh, doing my grad work, I was you know using AI uh, machine learning algorithms to discover these new pulsars. Well, nobody really cares about that. They, I mean, there's like 12 people that do it. That's awesome. Uh, and if you're watching, that's, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, <laughs> And, and they do really amazing work. But, I, you know, we were thinking, well, how can we apply these to other things? So that algorithm that I developed uh, was really good at doing semi-supervised learning. So this is when we just have a very small percentage of the data that is labeled, that we know what it is. And there's a whole bunch that we don't know. And maybe we didn't label it because it's expensive, because people would have to look at it. That's why we did it. Yeah. Um, and also looking for things that are extremely unbalanced. So there might be like one in... 10,000 that is the thing that we care about and want to find. Mm -hmm. So that situation happens in a lot of places. So we're trying to apply that right now in my other capstone group to cybersecurity data sets. So, you know, like fraudulent bank transactions or malicious network traffic and use that same algorithm that worked there in this situation that also has those conditions available. Yeah. So trying to find positive uses for the AI, I think is is important. Yeah. Yeah. And then from a cybersecurity standpoint, you're going to have to use that to combat all these people that are using it for the not right reasons, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, I mean, I, this has been such a great conversation. I feel like I just want to keep going. <laughs> so I guess we're just going to have to bring you back on yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, next go. year or, yeah. or, um, or sooner, uh, especially to follow up on all these, you know, yeah. things you that see are what they're doing. Next next year. Year. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Keep pulses right. on it, not just outside of this, but uh, let's share it with the world. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Let's make the thing. Yeah, this is great. Well, uh, Tom, thanks again for joining us. Um, that'll be it for, for us today. Um, again, we talked about everything from 
you know, what uh, Trilogy and um, uh, West Virginia University, those great programs in computer science and the different technology fields, what we're trying to do in uh, keeping uh, opportunities in West Virginia, keeping people in West Virginia, bringing new people to West Virginia and really, you know, getting that stigma out of West Virginia of, you know, the blue collar work, coal mining state, you know, we, uh, I think Randy said it really good um, the first time when we came up with, you know, this, this concept is, uh, you know, we want to be the Silicon Valley of the East. Yeah. Um, and I, and I love that vision and it, and it takes, you know, relationships between government, industry, education, and, uh, you know, this, this talk right here was a, a testament to that. So the great, yeah, we're the Silicon Mountains, by the way. Silicon Mountains, <laughs> yeah. So they could have the valley. Yeah. Silicon Valley. Yeah. Let's go right there. Silicon Hollers. <laughs> Silicon Hollers. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be right. evolving. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, thanks again, Tom. And uh, we'll see you next time.